Hello members. Good evening to you all. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Today I'd like to share with you some tactic and it's a technique always used in solving circuits, especially systems that involve transit circuits. Transit circuits they are majorly periodic and we analyze such circuits depending on the stability of the circuit. Now, today we are going to do together this example following step by step and we all get to know how we can go about transit circuit analysis in the example we are going to do uh, it's saying assuming the network below is in steady state prior to time t equals to zero find the current at any time t as the circuit is responding Above there is the answer, so we are going to work towards that answer. Step number one, when you're doing transit circuits, what you have to know, depending on the diagram given, you should analyze such a circuit and make sure the first step is to redraw the circuit by if the circuit having like storage devices for example inductors capacitors you have to replace a capacitor with an open circuit and the inductor with a short circuit as shown in the diagram below initially as the time is zero we see very well that our switch is open which implies the inductor remains in series with the resistors and the voltage source so we are going to replace our inductor with a short circuit such that a very large current goes through it and because we don't have a capacitor there, we are going to neglect the position of the switch in this diagram. At the point when the voltage source is supplying the inductor, when current is continuously flowing in the circuit, we have what we call continuity conditions. At continuity conditions, just as the switch is still open and just as the switch has closed the current that is flowing through the inductor is the initial current which gives us the initial conditions at current i of zero infinity negative will be equal to the current i of zero infinity positive and it is equal to the current at time t equals zero which is flowing through the inductor so when we take a loop through that circuit we see current i flowing through the inductor at t equals zero it gives us two amperes Now, the next step is we analyze the circuit when we have replaced back our inductor after closing the switch. Uh, when we revised our diagram, when you close the switch, we are going to short circuit the one ohm resistor, which implies in our circuit the one the current will not flow through the one ohm resistor rather it will flow through 
the closed switch in that circuit and then go through the inductor again. Now, that is the diagram after removing the switch. Now, this happens when time is greater than zero. The one ohm resistor I have told you it is short circuited and the inductor is still in a series with the six voltage source and the two ohm resistors. So applying KVL, catch off voltage law, we see that when we take a loop in a clockwise direction, negative six, because current enters the voltage source through the negative terminal of the, of the source, so we are having a negative six there, plus because the current flowing through the inductor is the rate of change of current times the induct uh, the inductance of the inductor, which is L D I D T, plus the current flowing through that multiplied by the voltage. So it's a voltage loop. Therefore, we are having voltage through the inductor plus the voltage through the two ohm resistor plus the voltage through the negative terminal of the inductor which is EMF. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that algebraic sum of EMFs in a closed loop is equal to voltage drops in that loop. Our next step here is you have to simplify that equation by substituting unknowns. The inductance was given as 1 Henry, so it's substituted there. And then we have that equation. We know that if we apply Laplace transformation here, we are having the S domain equation as shown below. Hope you can understand all well how we can determine the Laplace equation uh, of that time domain equation. And the IDT is the rate of change of current, so its Laplace tra transform will be S, the I of S, minus I of 0, which is our initial conditions. Then plus 2, I of S, which is equal to 6 over S. 6 is a constant. Simplifying this equation, we obtain the equation shown below. Now, in order to determine the equivalence of the above equation, we apply partial fractions. Now, how do we apply partial fractions? Most of the students here don't know how the simple term of simple way of determining the partial fractions of a polynomial. When you have a polynomial and you need to determine its partial fraction, for example that one, you have to get the simplest way. For example, the partial fraction of the above equation 6, six plus 2s over s into s plus 2 is equal to k0 over s plus k1 over s plus 2. We are transforming the equation. It's a fraction. We are transforming a certain fraction into another fraction. In, in, in other words, we are breaking up a fraction of ratios. Uh, because k0 is divided by s, in this case, we are going to say at s equals 0, by multiplying throughout by s so if we multiply throughout by s s in the denominator cancels with the s that will multiply in the other equation at the left hand side and s which multiplies the right hand side in the term k1 over s plus 2 will die out when we substitute s equals 0 Substituting s equals 0, we are remaining with only k0 as the only unknown. In the same way, when we replace s with negative 2, we are seeing s plus 2 
becomes negative 2 plus negative 2. In other words, it will be dying out. So multiplying throughout by s plus 2, the s plus 2 that will multiply the term with k0 will die out and leaves us with the only unknown as k1. Substituting negative 2 in the equation at the left hand side, we are getting 6 minus 4 over negative 2, which gives us negative 1. Next step, after transforming the equation into partial fractions, what we do is to replace it back in the original equation. And our last step will be transforming the equation into the time domain Laplace equation. I'll be glad if you all subscribe, like, and share the videos with your friends. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed moment.